Hello everybody and finally welcome to the proper event that is Kimetsu no Yaiba Feature Festival number two, the Infinite Castle Arc. We had a kind of stinky event last week, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie, we've been a bit starved recently, but today I get to tell you that we're gonna be eating for a couple of weeks. We are going to be eating because let me tell you, if you're a Kimetsu no Yaiba fan, this is a gas event. This is so hype. This is so hype. Let's let's not let's not dilly dally. Let's get into it. So this event, as you can see, we're starting off with the image of the four heroes. The four they're not really the four protagonists, because Nezuko would really be in there if we're talking protagonists, but as you can see. She is not one of the new units. She does not feature in this image. And I mean, we've got some old units here. Giyu is an old unit. Tokito is an old unit. Tanjiro, Shinobu. These are all old units. And we actually have Muzan here, who is not a playable character. We'll maybe talk about him a bit later. Uh, but I don't know. It's kind of like the four, the four main fighters of the new generation. I like it. I really like this, this imagery. I love these characters, bro. I love them so much. I love this series. It's awesome. So, login bonus, which starts in about an hour uh, of, as of me recording this. Probably would have already started by the time I upload this. In fact, definitely would have started by the time I upload this. Rubies and Infinite Castle gacha tickets. We'll explain those a bit below. Infinite Castle comeback campaign is on. The comeback campaign, you invite people, uh, you send people uh, line stamina to invite them to come back to the game. And if they do come back to the game, if they haven't played in over eight days, they come back. You'll both get a multi ticket. Uh, this is an important note. If you haven't done this, go into the Jumpooty Discord, which I will link in the description. Uh, in the friend code section, if you go to the pin messages, there is a line group there. Join that line group and add everybody in that line group. You don't need to get people to add you back. If you add them, you will appear on their list and they will appear on your list. And if you do that, then you can send stamina to all the people in there. And if any of them come back, Happy days, happy days. And not to mention, you should be doing that anyway because you should be sending stamina to your fellow players and they will be sending it back to you as long as you continue to play every day. So, put a note there. I'll leave that link in the description. The daily missions gives us an extra 40 stamina a day, which is good. It is good, good, good. We have the castle ticket gacha, the infinite castle ticket gacha. This uh, is your standard uh, gacha ticket for the event, but... Maybe I'll get lucky this time. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get lucky and I won't have to do too much summons from the standard gacha. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, you got. I think it's a 5% chance of pulling one of the uh, Kimetsu no Yabu units. Either the old ones or the new ones. So, kind of nice. Kind of nice. Um, this event is... It appears to just be a points event. They do have boosted characters for this. For some reason, I forgot to include the image here. There is a boosted... Uh, characters, Kimetsu no Yaiba characters boosting the amount of drops on this, of this Yushiro's Eye item. And that is... I mean, that's basically what there is to say about this event. But one of the things you do get from this event, you get silver tickets, gold tickets, multi-tickets, jewel shards, all this good stuff. You get the daily tickets, which I mentioned before, very nice. They're not daily tickets, the, the event tickets, I guess you call them. But you also get this other ticket. This ticket here. Which can be used to summon on this gacha, which gives you a guaranteed 5-star of those 4 units. So you'll be guaranteed either Nezuko, Zenitsu, Tanjiro, or Inosuke. All the version 1s of those characters. You are guaranteed one of those 4 as a 5-star unit. So pretty nice. Kind of similar to the One Piece thing, except the One Piece one, they let you choose one. This time you'll just get given it. And as with the One Piece one, I already have all the units, so it kind of doesn't matter. I'll probably just choose a dupe of whoever I need. The Maybe Nezuko? Maybe? I don't know. The rank up missions, we've had a lot of these by this point. You rank up your uh, rank. <laughs> That's your rank. You collect points and you rank up breakthrough ranks during the event. Going from here to here. And once you get to here, you can trade that with your Nichiren Blade, which you should have obtained earlier at some point. Either earlier this month or, or like end of last month. Or back when Kimmy Sunny Yeba Feature Festival number one was on. And you'll be able to upgrade that to the Red Blade, which obviously has some importance to the story of Kimetsu no Yaiba. By the way, there is going to be spoilers in this video. I haven't really said that much so far, but there's going to be spoilers. If, you, if you're if you not up to that Kimetsu no Yaiba, it's probably best to, like, not 
<laughs> not watch this. I, I don't want to spoil it for people because this is this is a great arc, and uh, I just I don't want people to be spoiled on it if I can avoid it. So uh, if if maybe just set out this event, <laughs> maybe just set out this event. It's major spoilers. There's gonna be major spoilers. Um, but yeah, you get the Red Blade, which I'm a little bit unclear on what the Red Blade actually gets you. I think it gets you some kind of... You know what it might be? You know, I have a theory that it might be the case that you get the Nitrium Blade in Feature Festival number one. Feature Festival number two, you upgrade it to the Red Blade. And in Feature Festival number three, you're going to use the Red Blade to defeat Muzan. Maybe. I don't know how that's going to work. Maybe you'll get some free unit or something. I don't know. Um, daily Stage, you know the drill of Daily Stage. is be here every day. Get yourself some freebies. Genya! Genya has been added to the game. He is a free to play unit. He is an evolver stage similar to like a, I don't know, like a Lambo from Kimitsune Yaiba or something like that. Not Kimitsune Yaiba, like Tiger Him and Reborn. Uh, the only difference is he starts at 5 star, not 4 star. And you just collect the pieces of Kokushibo's Shattered Blade to evolve him to 6 star. And then you farm copies. The stage to farm copies is actually starting a bit later. Why does it say that? The stage to farm copies starts on the 12th. So, bear that in mind, you won't be able to get him to max lock straight away, so just evolve him, and then wait for that stage to come out. Kaigaku, Transcendent Class Event. Something of note here, the stage is blue, the boss will be blue, Kaigaku will be blue, but he will actually drop as a yellow unit. I thought this was a really nice touch, because obviously he is one of the inheritors of the thunder breathing techniques. So, or lightning, is it lightning or thunder? I don't know, whatever. So he's going to be yellow. Hopefully he's going to be a free-to-play shock unit, but he's a transcendent, so most likely he's not going to be that good anyway. Very nice sprite, though. Very nice. Him and Genya both have very nice sprites. Very true to the series. I quite like it. Um, Doma. This stage has a lot of importance to me. Bro, This for me, this is the peak of the series. I really love the fight between Zenitsu and Kaigaku. This is the peak of the series. Because I... I, I hated Doma so much at the end of this. I hated him so much. Which is just a mark of how well he had been written because he just kept saying things that fucking got under your skin. And that's exactly what he was doing to the main characters that were involved in this fight. And just the storyline of this fight and the past and the fact that both the characters fighting with him had a past with him and had a reason to hate him, whether they were aware of it or not at the time. They got to know that by the end of the fight. And, oh, bro, bro, it's so good. The fucking, the rage, the fucking rage for a no and Kano. It's, oh, it's the peak. This is the peak of Kimitsu no Yaiba. So I'm very happy this is a catastrophe stage. They kind of did a weird one on us, uh, where Kano is actually a standard gacha unit. She does counter this stage. Inosuke is a freeze play unit. It does actually counter this stage. Uh, but the main counter for this stage is going to be Zenitsu. So Zenitsu actually has sh um, shock on his main attack, but he has frost resist on his passive so that he can deal with Doma, which is all a bit odd, but this is one of maybe like a few stages that actually inflict, inflict freeze. I can only think of uh, Silverman right now that could, does it otherwise, so it's cool that some units are going to get some decent love um, and they're going to be able to <laughs> actually be used, you know, <laughs> actually be used. Uh, maybe Goldman. Maybe Goldman will get used. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, but I'm hoping this is going to be a nice challenge, and that way it'll be much more satisfying when I clear it. We have the special Legend Summon event where you can get the Infinite Castle Legend Summon. Uh, we're getting a lot of Legend Summons nowadays. It's becoming quite common to have one almost every event, so I, I quite like that. I quite like that. Uh, hopefully it's going to be quite useful. We've had some interesting ones recently. Uh, Kokushibo stage. Catastrophe stage. This is actually in two parts. It's an Ultimate Class event where you can farm copies of him. And then the Catastrophe stage is Stephra. Bro, look at him. Menacing. Menacing. Very nice aura as well. It's actually two-tone. I like that. Um, probably going to be quite difficult. <laughs> it's probably going to be quite difficult. But I look forward to it. I look forward to it. And one thing they're doing in this event that I find very interesting is a 100% drop rate boost at the end of the event. So... The way this works is, say for example, Kaigaku. This stage will have, whenever this stage is active, it will have a boosted 100% drop rate, I believe. No, this one won't, but this one will. So these stages, if you open them with keys, will only drop 
one copy of the character. But if you open it when it's not with keys and it's just in its regular rotation, it will drop two copies of the character because it's a 100% boost rate. Up here, you don't get the 100% boost if you open it with keys or not. Now, that's going to be double drop on what you would normally get. And this is going to be triple drop on what you would get if you opened it with keys. So you'll actually get three copies of the characters every time you beat it. So, probably a good time to get some uh, jewel droplets, or what are they called? <laughs> Event droplets. Uh, beating these stages. Whichever one you find easiest, I guess. Uh, whichever one of the catastrophes you find easiest, or the ultimate class stages. Kind of cool. A nice way to get people to finish up the event at the end. You can go and you can go and beat it. Pretty good. Uh, Limited Gacha Zenitsu. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about Zenitsu because I I'm excited. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think personally the big stake for me in this arc was Doma. I wanted Kanal to be a limited. She wasn't. Okay, fair enough. Zenitsu count as Doma. But that's not really why I'm summoning for him. I really like Zenitsu. I love his fight with Kaigaku. And his skill set's kinda kinda cool. He's kind of sort of a yellow version of Tanjiro, and you guys know how much I love Tanjiro, so kinda cool. Is I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what I can do with him. I'm definitely gonna be summoning for him. The way things have worked out, I'm probably gonna summon for him and do a video on that. Um, but if I have the opportunity if the rubies will allow it i will also be summoning for the second limited which is yorichi he doesn't come out until the 11th i am going to be streaming on the 11th which is next wednesday uh, so look uh, we might be summoning for <laughs> we might be summoning you for yorichi on stream so don't forget to check out the stream it'll be four o'clock gmt on the 11th wednesday the 11th uh, but the Zenitsu one we'll be doing on video, so stay tuned for a video of me summoning on Zenitsu. And also I've got to do the standard gacha at some point, but we'll work that out when we get there. Uh, but yeah, Yorichi, I don't know if I'd say it was a surprise. I don't think it was a surprise. Especially after we saw Kokushibo, it, it seemed almost 100% guaranteed. But, I don't know, It's 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 weird. I, I kind of, it's the same thing that happened with, uh, which event was it? Was it Bleach? No, no, it wasn't Bleach. One of the events, I was like, wow, we actually don't have the protagonist in this one. I think it was Gintama. We didn't have a new Gintaki. It's like, oh, wow, we actually don't have a new Gintaki. And in this event, we don't have a new Tanjiro. I really thought we were going to get one. But Yorichi makes sense as a limited. I'm just glad he's not a Muso because I wouldn't have been able to afford it. So... I'll probably pull. I'll probably pull, to be honest. I mean, we'll see. I want to see what the animations are like. I want to see what the skills are like. But ideally, in a perfect world, we keep our 100% Kimitsu no Yaiba logbook. So we're going to have to summon on him. <laughs> we're going to have to. Um, we have the Infinite Castle New Heroes gacha, which features Kanao, who I absolutely must have. Sanemi and Himejima are also there. And I want them. And I do like them, but compared to Kanao, it's just, it's, it's a different level, fam. It's a different level. Um, so I'll probably, I don't know what I'm going to do, but ideally I'm pulling on, I'm pulling for everybody. Uh, this is one of the better summon formats, I would say, uh, because you get a free multi on the firm multi, so... In a situation where you were going for all of them, I guess maybe it's not as... Is it as good? It's not as good? I don't know. Basically, to do a full rotation, it's three 250 instead of four 250. Because you get that free multi in there. So, I don't know. I like it. I like this format. It's a good format. And we have the daily gift sale, which is... This is the best sale, and this sale only if you're a whale. This sale you can do anyway, because it's not that expensive. It's very good. And these sales is some slightly cheaper rubies, which I may have to pick up, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I may have to pick these up, but I'm going to have to decide quick because I've only got 72 hours. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. And the new event type, Explosive Breakthrough. This event is interesting. <laughs> so we have the new Inosuke, who is a free-to-play unit, but he is a free-to-play unit with a costume with a 
uh, a special set of missions, an evolver. Like, it's a whole mix of different events put into one, but the main thing is some kind of landmark missions. Now, as I've said to other people, seeing that he's a free-to-play unit at first is kind of disappointing, but when you see his animations, you kind of think, well, hold up a minute. This might actually be something here. And... Yeah, I think it's probably going to be something. So you can see these missions here. These two here are the ones that pique my interest most. We've got play 50 matches in PvP and win 50 matches in PvP. And between those two, you will get free luck and free luck. You'll get six luck on your Onosuke. He goes up to 99. So for winning 50 matches in PvP, you'll be at six luck. <laughs> you'll be at six luck now i don't think all the missions are related to pvp there's a load of other stuff but i think the idea is this is something you work on over time you'll have like a certain task and it's like okay i need to reach this task i need to clear this many stages or do this many things whatever so i'm interested to see if we get more of these in the future i think we probably will but i, I don't know how long these event periods are going to go for how long you're going to have to do the missions they're probably going to be quite lenient with it uh but it looks cool and Nosuke Sprite looks cool. I'm intrigued by this event. Now, in terms of other stuff, because that's pretty much the end of the main news, we also have, if I flip over to my other window, where is it? There we go. We also have a look at some of the other banner images. So obviously we've seen this one, and we've this one's interesting. Zenitsu originally didn't have his yellow Haori, on his limited this is the one we've got now and this is the one we used to have or what would have happened before interesting at least i would say interesting um not that interesting though <laughs> but i think it would have been cool to have him canal and tandra all with the standard demon slayer uniform no howardy uh sadly zenitsu did get his added but he still looks good and it's i think it's more true to the series so it's fine um we have the Defeat Doma banner, which is nice. Hamidento is nice. Yomi is nice. Juzo is nice. I mean, technically not all 2020 units because Hamidento is 2019, but that's a pretty good banner. That's a pretty good banner. And then we have, if we scroll through, Yorichi actually had some slight changes to his sprite as well. I also think they spelled his name wrong originally. Um, I don't know. We have Hiei returning. If you've missed out on Hiei, he's, he's pretty damn good. He's one of the better units you can get for red. So, yeah, if you're a fan of Hiei, this is a good unit to go for. And it will help you beat Ryzen, who is also returning uh, sometime, probably next week or the week after. And we have the Defeat Ryzen banner. Now, this is interesting to me because we have the Defeat Ryzen banner. And next to it, we have the Defeat Kokushibo banner. And the Defeat Ryzen banner has three 2020 units and one very good 2019 unit. And the Defeat Kokushibo banner has a load of old ass units. A lot of old ass units. And then Himejima. Now, I'm not saying you should summon on this banner. And I'm not saying you should summon on any of these banners in particular. But I would say don't summon on this banner. Don't summon on this banner, because it's not good. Unless they change it later, this banner's not good. Not that any of these units are necessarily bad, but they're all in the fucking choice ticket standard gachapool except Himajima. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Uh, we have the ninja gacha returning. Does this mean the ninja event's going to happen again this year? Probably not, but we probably are going to get a reprint of that event at least. We'll probably get... Uh, um, now we... What's his name? Now we... I can't remember. But we'll, we'll get him returning. <laughs> we'll get him returning. And uh, we've got the Ninja Gacha here. Not too bad. Some 2020 units in there. 20, 2019 units in there. I don't know. I personally wouldn't summon on it. But some nice units there for sure. We have Kazuki Odin returning for a our uh, monthly tower event. Which is... Something... I wouldn't summon for him. I wouldn't do it. Look, honest, honest opinion. Hands up in the air, honest opinion. Don't summon on this. He's not good. He has he has utility in places, but he's not someone you should be spending 9, 000, uh, 8, 250 rubies on. Never, never, never. 
Just saying. Tower banner. For that event, the popular tower gacha. We have Mister. We have Camus or Camu. Uh, we have what's his name? Is it Finks? I think it's Finks. And then we have the newest version of Piccolo, and we have Date Omito. Not a bad banner at all. Some actually really new, decent units and some good older units. Uh, you can pull on these banners, but I I never do. I never do. And then now we're looking at the free gacha here. This is the one that gives you the guaranteed one of those four units. This is just a standard daily one. Uh, this is the one you get from buying the pack. Uh, but there was actually something else I wanted to show you that I kind of need to skip through a lot of stuff here to get to. Um, let's take a look. I'm pretty sure it's past the events. So there's some stages for you. Okay, so Muzan. Muzan is not playable, but I have a very distinct feeling that he is going to come back in Kimitsu no Yaiba Feature Festival number 3 or he is going to be possibly a standard gacha in a Dark Heroes event or something like that. Uh, I have no doubt that he is definitely going to be added because they've gone to the effort of making this sprite and Muzan is a very popular character. They made a version of him unlimited that I maybe don't think should have been unlimited but they still made him unlimited. And look, we're going to get we're going to get this Muzan at some point, but he is not playable during this event. And I think he is one of many things that has been safe for Kimitsu no Yaiba Feature Festival number 3, which will either be a mixture of events from throughout the series, or it will be focused on the final battle against Muzan. One or the other. Um, what else do we have? Let's take a look. We've got to scroll for a little bit here. because Okay, so you may have noticed here. <laughs> you may have noticed here. That we actually have a new unit that is not from Kimitsu no Yaiba. This is a new tower unit. We have Chisaki from Yuna's Haunted Hot Springs. And we'll we'll get a better look at her in just a little bit. But can I just say it's a very nice sprite. It's a very like it is it is a top fucking tier sprite. These Kimitsu no Yaiba ones are bangers anyway. Also, you might be wondering why the uh <laughs> well, we've had re-uploads of Toro Aikawa, Aikawa's Halloween stuff. I don't know why. I can't tell you why because I don't know why. But they have been re-uploaded for some reason. I'm sure there is a reason. I don't know why. But he's been re-uploaded. I looked as hard as I could and I couldn't find any uh, distinction between this and the old one. So, I don't know. But if we scroll through here, as you can see, there she is. Bro, they have fucking hit this sprite out of the park the bloom on the lighting and the sprite design is 10 out of 10 we haven't seen a unit unit in quite some time so uh, i'm pretty fucking satisfied i gotta be honest um but th don't get me wrong the kimmy sunny ones are fucking godly as well it's just that i didn't expect to see her in the data download i thought we were gonna have another kimmy sunny Abbey unit in the tower but no it's Chisaki, and she looks good. She looks good. Um, now, I need to get down to the items, because there is an important item we need to talk about. So I'm just going to have to quickly pay through some of this stuff, which is not very good video, but it is what it is. Uh, let's see. So, we have the Kimitsu no Yaiba multi-ticket. I have no idea what this is. I can't seem to find a banner that it's attached to. But I assume it guarantees you a Kimitsu no Yaiba unit in like from your multi i don't know i i, I don't know but there, there doesn't appear to be any other information on it so fucking i guess we'll see i guess we'll see um but the other thing i wanted to talk about is right at the end of these i believe and that is this this item i originally thought was a limit break door but after doing a bit more research it appears to be something you trade in at an event store so what the fuck is it? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Uh, from what I can tell, obviously, like I said, it's uh, some kind of event item. But we have a translation here. Now, don't get me wrong, this might be wrong, but this is I got this from an, a proper source. Um, it appears to be B, which means something along the lines of beautiful 
very satisfactory, good, to beautify, to be pleased with one. So that's what the official translation is here. Uh, thinking of the bi in bishojo, something like that. So, bi, what does it mean? What the fuck does it mean? I don't know. What does it mean? It could be anything. Um, now, I don't want to get too gassed up because a lot of the time we've seen stuff like this and it's ended up being one of the most mundane things it could possibly be. But, B. Now, one thing I did consider is what if maybe Chisaki is not the new tower unit and you get her from some kind of event store and you trade in for her. Or she is a tower unit. But it's some kind of tower event unit. We've had tower event units before. And you have to collect these doors and trade them in for her. That's also a possibility. I don't really know. But I don't remember ever seeing anything like this in Unit Haunted Hot Springs. So I don't necessarily think it's attached to her. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is. But something for people to speculate in the comments and whatnot. And uh, yeah. I guess that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, next, next, next video is probably going to be summons. And probably some despair. I don't know. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.